video. In this video, we are going to explore the connection between heroin use and violence in the ghetto. Soldier Slim talks about New Orleans in 1994. Like a big dog with post to, you understand what I'm saying? You know, it wasn't a thing to do with that what I was doing at the time. Man, it's crucial in New Orleans, man. Yes, that's saying if a little past 94 and it was on the street, it was James and fuck all that. <laughs> man, what the fuck you talking about? If a little past 94 and it was out here off the porch, a nigga gangster. It was reading and weak, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I ruled it a quarter, nigga. I'm telling you. If a little past 94, that was the worst year. That was the worst year. And I was out here snorting, running like a big dog with post to. He said I was out here snorting dope and coke like a big dog. Now let's get it. Real Magnolia, nigga. You understand me? You gotta be real, nigga. Rest in peace to Slim. Rest in peace to D-Boy Stiggity, nigga. It can be killer stand. Tell them niggas who that stole our style and ain't no need that back, Jack. You understand? You feel me? Uh, yeah, they want that boy shit. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we gonna get some nigga free beat jizzle. Uh -huh. I see you juvie, real nigga. You feel me? Uh, uh, they want that hot boy shit. Okay, well let's reload it. If he ain't bought it, don't hold it. If he ain't gonna bang it, don't tote it. Niggas fake fraud and everything else. I'ma expose it. You only bought it cause you loaded. Nigga bust his with so They want that hot boy shit. Okay, well let's reload it. If he ain't bought it, don't hold it. If he ain't gonna bang it, don't tote it. Nigga fake fraud and everything else. I'ma expose it. You only bought it cause you loaded. Nigga bust his with so Let's take them back to 94 when they were snorting powder bags. Baby showed them how to swag. Taught these niggas how to brag. Frank Mingo. Was the car and I'm picking up picking up body bags. Coke was galore. Columbia came with a lot of yeah. Never met up from that no yeah. The Reebok song. Bumping that dope off a of beeper in the Nokia your phone. In 96, the richest nigga in the know you was stoned. So let it really kill a nigga just to know that he gone. And when a nigga took a nigga cell, we called the short stop. In 99, they had a different term. They call it baller block. And yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Now, let's talk about it. In this interview, BG says, I regret using dope when I was 15. In, this, in another interview, Turk is talking about getting high and catching on fire at a, at, a, at a video shoot. In another video with Vlad TV, Turk talks about how he overdosed on heroin four days before he got arrested. He did, a, he did 10 years in prison. Now, what I want to talk about is the impact that New Orleans culture had on my city. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I have an older brother who's eight years older than me. So I was able to actually witness... The generation that's in their 40s, I watched them when I was a child. And New Orleans, if you're from New Orleans, you might not believe this, but your city influenced my city so much that because y'all gangsters and y'all rappers was sniffing dope and rapped about it, it made people in my city start sniffing dope. All the notorious killers in Richmond, Virginia, all the guys who got these reputations as murderers, they wanted to be like Soldier Slim, BG. So they started sniffing dope. So one thing that I'll, so what happened in my city, Richmond, Virginia, is if somebody was known to sniff dope, even though they weren't a, really a, a stereotypical junkie, they might have been hustling, getting money. They had a lot. They might have been rich, but you don't trust him because he might kill you. And I think that whole thing came from New Orleans because that's not from our city. When New Orleans dominated the hip hop scene in the late 90s, I seen it. I seen it. The stereotypical killer became a dope sniffing, pistol packing hustler that will blow your brains out when he was high on that furrow. And I seen it, I witnessed it, and I know that New Orleans doesn't want to take that. And don't they don't want to be known for that. But at the same time, I gotta keep it real. That's what happened. Back then there was no social media. In the late 90s, all we had was CDs and lyrics, and we listened, and it influenced people. When cash money came out, no limit came out. People in the street started changing their names to Soldier Slim, Giggity, BG. They took the their names, they took their culture, mixed it with our own culture, and it made our city violent. And all the killers had one thing in common. They sniffed dope. Peace.